Get ready for the message as our pastor takes it away. Praise the Lord. He'll do it again. Amen, church. Didn't he do it again for you? And he, and he keeps on doing it again. Praise him. Wow. I'm so blessed. Um, my man, we, we just want to encourage you also. Brother Nicholas, can we give him a hand for staying behind everybody and doing this thing? And I was so blessed um, from this morning and even to praise the worship, the special music and the, the children's message. I feel full, actually. Um, if you want to know the truth there, Brother Javed, I'm full. But um, I know the Lord has so much more in store for us this afternoon. Can we say amen to that? Praise God. Let us pray. Father, we just come before you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We are in need of a word today. And Lord, particularly those of us who weren't able to come and they're on the platform, Father, they need a word from you. Lord, we thank you that you are such a gracious and patient God. I don't know what I would do without the mercy of God. So we just give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Can I invite the church to stand? And if you will, if you could turn in your Bible or your devices to Acts chapter 28. Acts chapter 28. I'm going to be reading from verse 1 um, to verse 6. Acts chapter 8 from verse 1. Pardon me. Thank you, Ray. Acts chapter 28 from verse 1 to 6. It reads like this. Now, when they had escaped, they then found out that the island was called Malta. And the natives showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled a fire and made us all welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. So when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, no doubt this man is a murderer, whom, though he has escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow him to live. But he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. However, they were expecting that he would swell up or suddenly fall down dead. But after they had looked for a long time, and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a God. This is the word of the Lord. Can the church say amen? I just need you to look at your neighbor and just say, when snakes bite. Um, admittedly, for a long time, I sort of read this passage of scripture as just shake it off, you know, and um, I'm reminded of Acts chapter 16, I believe, where um, Peter and John, I believe, were singing hymns and the chains, the chains fell off and it's the shaking off thingy. Um, I realized that I missed something though. I missed something in this passage because this is not just about a snake bite. This is not even about shaking it off. This is about a detour. You see, if you didn't read Acts chapter 27, then you'd probably read Acts chapter 28 in isolation. But the two are linked, and you'll see. Turn in your Bible to Acts chapter 27, please. And I'm going to be reading from verse 21 of Acts chapter 7. I'm sorry, Acts chapter 27 from verse 21. It reads like this. 
And this is a shipwreck. And this is a storm that Paul and a number of other men are going through on a ship. But after long abstinence from food, then Paul stood in the midst of them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and have not and not have sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. And now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve, saying, do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all of those who sail with you. Therefore, take heart, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. However, we must run aground on a certain, come on, church, a certain island, a certain island. Praise the Lord. The, the point of reading that passage is to create some context for when you get bitten by a snake. You see, Paul in chapter 28 has escaped a storm which then leads to the snake bite. I know you won't get it yet, but just work with me here. The Bible says, now when they had escaped, then they found out the island was called Malta and the natives showed us unusual kindness for they kindled a fire and made all of us welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. So here we have a situation where Paul is on his way where? Come on, church. To Rome. But he ends up where? In Malta. And who told him that? The angel of the Lord. All right. This story is about a detour. Anybody know what a detour is? Okay, now we all use Google Maps. I understand that. But anybody ever had a detour that you did not anticipate? Are you with me, church? All right. We've all had a detour. And a detour basically is you're on your way to a destination, but you ended up somewhere for the moment. Are you following me now? Because... In the spiritual sense, somebody needs to understand that there are detours in life. And a detour in the spiritual sense is an unanticipated disappointment that God puts you on. I don't want to work too hard here, church. I need you to work with me here. In other words, what I'm saying is every dis disappointment isn't from the devil. You have to jump and do jumping jacks here. We may be grossly misinformed when we equate every problem to that as being from the devil. What this story tells us is that the angel of the Lord told Paul, don't what? Be afraid because you're on your way to Rome. However, you got Malta first. I know we're going to get there. The Bible says they escaped the seas and nobody died. Brother Ray told us, this afternoon, that COVID showed up in his home. Detours, Ray. That's what you call that. Nobody was planning for COVID to show up. But then the Bible also tells me that the angel says, Ray, nobody will die. Come on, aren't you happy? that you're alive today. 
You see, sometimes we take a detour and we think Satan is behind it. Wrong. Because the detours in life are confirmation that you're in the right direction. Come on, church. Can, can, can somebody say amen? Just, just one. All right. Because here's the thing. Paul is on his way, Sister Wilson, to Rome. But before he gets to Rome, he needs to get to Malta. Is anyone feeling blessed this afternoon? Because some of us think that just because of a disappointment, God didn't ordain it. You're wrong. There is something about a detour that reminds us that we are not lost. We're just delayed. See, some of you guys haven't traveled, so you can't appreciate a delay. But if I can just go there with um, the Wilsons, they know what delays are. Sister Muriel knows what a delay is because when you get into Pearson Airport, you're going to be delayed. Now, let me tell you something. Paul receives a word from the Lord, from the angel of the Lord. And, and the angel of the Lord says, Paul, do not be afraid. You're not going to die. Neither are the heathens who are around you going to die. You missed it. Sometimes God is saving someone's life because of you. I know that he, the heathen don't want to hear that. But you play a bigger role in someone's life than they realize. Paul is on the ship. And because Paul is on the ship, no loss of life because the man of God is there. That's why wherever you work, sometimes things just work out good because you're there. But as soon as you're gone, so is the business. I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything here. But all I'm trying to tell you is that the word of God is pointing us to an interesting dilemma that we sometimes attribute to Satan. So the Bible tells me that Paul is on his way, where? To, to Rome. But he ends up, all right, so now you're with me. The Bible says when he actually gets to Malta, everyone in the town shows him kindness. And they say unusual kindness. Are you with me, church? You just got to picture yourself as Paul, just for today. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. They show him unusual kindness, and they start to kindle a fire, and they made everyone welcome. Isn't it nice when people treat you good? Now, there's something interesting here, because it's raining, and it's cold, and they're building a... You don't see anything wrong with that, church? Okay, I get it. All right. So they're cold, and you would build a fire. But what about when it's raining? I'm going to work hard today, man. So we understand it's cold. You're going to build a fire. But when it's raining, too? You see, sometimes you got to do some things that don't always make sense to the people around you, praise God. You're trying to build something, and everybody thinks you're crazy for trying to build it. The Bible tells us that Paul sees them working, and, the, and, what, Paul, and what does Paul do? Thank you, deacon. So, he, so Paul joins in to the building of a fire session. He doesn't sit idle. He gets involved. Come on, church people. Did you hear it? Paul sees other people building and he gets involved. Paul sees other people building and he gets involved. He doesn't take a passive role. He doesn't become a spectator. And the Bible says, Paul gathers a bundle of six. And he, and, and he lays them on the fire. And then what happens? 
Come on, church. And then what happens? A viper came out because of the devil only attacks people who attack him. Did you miss it? Nobody got bitten by any snake yet until Christians are always wondering, why me? When you are a threat to the devil, you're the first target. Did you notice that they were all building a fire and no snakes came until the man of God gets involved? This is a problem that some of us have when the situation happens and only you got in trouble. Only you're losing sleep. Only you're having this issue at work. Nobody else but you. Because it is intentional that the devil identifies those who create a problem for him. Come on, church. So it is personal. Yes, the devil is getting you, Javed. It, it is personal, Sister Melissa. It, it is you. It is about you, Andy. It is about you, Shay. Stop arguing and stop complaining that it's you. It has to be you. Come on, can I get an amen, please? Just, just encourage me because I want to feel like I'm preaching to the saints of God who are having a difficult time and are trying to understand why me. And the devil says, because you are a problem. I feel, all right, I feel like I'm getting somewhere here. So we're all building the fire, no snakes, until you show up and start praying, until you show up with this Bible talk, till you show up with your Holy Ghost fire and all kinds of things going on in your life, until you show up, then somebody gets bit. So a lot of times Christians are saying, why would they bite me when I'm only helping? You ever ask that question? Because the devil wants you eliminated. Oh, that took a lot, man. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Andy. I need it. So, so here's what happens. So everyone is building and the snake shows up because now he's impacted, right? The Bible says um, because of the, so he gathers the sticks and he lays them on the fire. A viper came out because of the heat. So the, everything was fine. And the, the viper was minding his own business, Sister Johanna. But as soon as the fire gets up, he jumps up and he bites the man of God. A lot of times when you don't do anything, Satan doesn't trouble you. But as soon as you start doing something, the devil attacks. Well, here's what happens. The Bible says, that, and we all know this. The snake jumps out of the fire and fastens itself on his hand. We had, we had a garden snake in our little place there up in the country. I'd never seen this thing, but I was told there is, there is a garden snake. I can live with a garden snake, church. They're little small, little green things. They mind their own business. But the Bible tells us that this was a Come on, church. This was a, a viper, and the viper stays on Paul's hand. That's not usual for a venomous snake. I want to dig into this a little bit here, because the venomous snake has what? Venom. You with me, church? So, so the, the venomous snake don't really have to strangle you. As we know, we've, we've heard that before, you know, like the boa constrictor, um, the, 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 it kind of wraps itself around you, right? And squeezes the life out of you. Not a venomous snake. The venomous snake only has to bite you and go on its way because it's the venom that's the, 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 the deadly thing, not the bite. Let me, let me share something with you, church. The Bible says that the snake fastened 
on his hand because it was personal. Did you miss it, church? We're not just, I'm not just going to give you venom. I want you to feel it. That's how Satan works. It's not just about you. It's your whole family he wants. It's not just about your, your, your lack of ability to sleep, but I want to take your joy also. I want to take your peace and your serenity, and I want to shake your faith. That's why the snake holds on to him and doesn't let go. So this is why when I was much younger, the, the, there was a song that the, the mothers used to sing. Can't catch me again. Satan, you can't catch me again. I was down in the valley for a very long time. Wanted what? Jesus came, then you let me go. You can't catch. So I used to say, wait a second here. You mean he was holding on to you? You mean he wasn't trying to let you go? The snake jumps on Paul and it's not letting go. And it's in a similar way, Satan will not go if you. You ready for this one, church? His purpose is to hold on to you to remove something that God has placed in you. This is why it is important for the people of God to remind yourself that he can't hold on to you. You have to encourage yourself to let it go, right? So Paul and everyone else sees what's happening. And this is what happens when Satan attacks you in public. He attacks you in public to discredit you in public. You ever notice some of the worst arguments you had? Other people were aware of it? Okay, none of, that's never happened to you. My apologies. I'm, I'm judging. I'm judging. Sorry, guys. Forgive me. <laughs> but sometimes you get into some arguments and the neighbors heard. Or the children heard. Or the guests. Somebody heard. It's a public affair now. Uh, this is why some of the prominent men in, in, in the church, when they get involved with a woman and, and in extramarital affairs, Satan wants everyone to know. You see, Brother Andy, because when everyone knows, now everyone else's faith is impacted. Praise God. I don't know who was being encouraged by this, but the Bible says it fastened on his hand. And then here's what happened. So when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, no doubt this man is a murderer. So all of a sudden, you, you loved me when I was helping you. When I was helping you build, everything was good. But as soon as Satan attacks me, you attack me too. Am I talking to anyone today? Okay, so it was cool, Ray, when we were all building. But when Satan decided to attack Andy, we all turn on Andy now. Is the church awake this afternoon? The same people that you were rubbing shoulders with, doing the work, building everything, have now decided to abandon you and denigrate you. You see how people are? This is why your parents used to say, your friends are the people in your home. Nobody's ever heard that one? Man, I could... I heard that so many times. I started to believe it after a while. You have friends? Where are they now? All right. All right. The friends are the people that's related to you. They live with you. They share the same washroom with you. You eat breakfast with them. So I, I began to understand, okay, so this friendship stuff is real. Because I recall a time when I had so many friends. Until one bad man friend in our group turned on me, and I had no friends after that day. 
The Bible says that Paul was building with these brothers and sisters. But when the devil attacked him, let me just speak figuratively, they turned on him. How many people remember that the Bible says a friend loves? Come on, church. Thank you, sister. A friend loves at all times. You want to know who your friend is? It's the person who loves you when you're down and out. When you're not so polite, when you're not so kind and courteous, they still love you. When they are committed to you, even when you're not committed to them, the Bible tells us that a friend loves you at all times. Whether you're up or down, sideways, whatever it is, they'll love you. The Bible says that the men said, no doubt this man is a murderer whom, though he has escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow to live. But he shook off the creature into the fire. Come on, church, give God a hand. Give God a hand that when the devil was trying to hold on to you, God gave you the Holy Spirit who gave you the power to shake him off. And he can't catch you again, amen? Aren't you happy that Satan can't catch you again? Praise the Lord. And he suffered no harm. Somebody needs to be reminded today that when the devil attacks, it is not a mortal wound. Did you catch it, church? When he may attack your character, your word, your life, your commitment to Christ, it is not a mortal wound. So don't treat it that way. Can the church say amen? You see, that's why there will always be people to remind you of who you were. And when you used to go there and everywhere with them, and now you say you're a Christian. Or they say, well, you're a hypocrite. You said one thing, you did another thing. No problem, but I'm going to shake it off. I know where I'm going now. I know where I'm headed. I'm going to glory. Can the church say amen? I know where I'm going now. Maybe I didn't know it last year, but I know it now. Praise God. So Paul shakes off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. However, they were expecting, hallelujah. They were expecting something to happen to you, Brother Gervais. They were expecting something to happen, Brother Jay. You're still here. You still got your right mind. You're still a child of God. Nobody can take it when God gives it to you. Amen, church? They were expecting that you wouldn't make it, Ray. Here you are. Can you imagine the natives have engaged in a silent auction and trial without even letting Paul know. He's already been condemned, and now they're expecting that he would swell up and suddenly fall dead. You see, sometimes we go through things in life, and there are people expecting you to throw in the towel. They are expecting you, Brother AJ, to die. They thought that was it for you. And then you showed up again. Then you came back next week on the Monday with the right attitude. And they were hoping that you would have just walked away and given up and thrown the towel and, and, and resigned from the position and say, that's enough but you're going for what God has given you because whatever God gives you, no man can take. Praise God, I got to encourage myself in here. They were expecting you to give up and all you did was give in. You see, the snake bite was not a mortal wound, but the snake had to bite you in order for you to remember that God is still in control. So while you, are, you may be complaining about the bite you had to take, God allowed it because you stopped in Malta. 
Wow, I think you missed that one. Before you got the bite, you had the detour. And the detour sets you up to get bitten because someone else needs to have your blessing. And your blessing comes when you get the lesson. Can we give the Lord a hand, church, please? I'm trying here. You see, he suffered no harm, but his life became a testimony of who God is. That's why you're here, church. You are here because your life serves as a testimony of who God is. Praise God. Now, the Bible says this. I'm going to wrap up here. They said that he was a God. They said that he was a God. This is what people struggle with when they don't know your God. They see you make it, they see you take it, but they don't see the God you serve. So it is, we, we are called on to tell people that it's not me, but it's God. When someone's life is touched because of your pain, because of your story, you must share the good news. Don't keep it to yourself. You're not allowed. I am not allowed. It is not you. You are not God, but you know God. Amen. Are you with me, church? You, it's not you, but you know the you who caused it to happen to you. You, you follow, church? So, so it's not you, but you know the you who turned you around. So now you have to share who that, that you is. Wow, I don't know what that was, but it sounded good. Listen, the Bible says in that region, there was, a, there was an estate of the leading citizens in the island whose name was Publius, who received us and entertained us courteously for three days. Watch this church. And it happened that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and dysentery. Paul went in to him and prayed and did what? And he laid his hands on him and healed him. Where did Paul get bitten? Come church, we gotta do. We can do this together. We're, we're almost at the end here. So the the same place that Paul was bitten became the strongest point for him to heal someone else's life. That's why you got bitten. Because it's proof that God is going to use your bite to become a blessing in someone else's life. You're asking yourself, why me? Why not you? Why not you? Why not me? Oh, Lord, why, why, why not so-and-so? Why not you? The same place that the devil tried to destroy this man's life became his source of power to do the work of God. So you had to go through it. Somebody needs to know that you have to go through it. Because when you go, you can't always see it when you're, when you're in it, by the way. But as soon as you get through it, praise God, someone else's life is gonna be changed because of yours. I just want to encourage someone this afternoon. Keep on praying. Keep on hoping. Keep on keeping on. The, the, we used to hear that song years ago. Man, I, I thank God for songs that I learned as a youngster because they've never left me. You see? And the song used to say, let's keep on Let's keep on keeping on. We all know the road is rough and long. And then we would say, it's not easy. 
right? But when you're, when you're a kid and you're hearing those words, you can't appreciate it. And then the, the, the song said, it's not easy. Then the choir would say, no, it's not easy, right? So there was, there was a mutual consensus that this Christian walk isn't easy. And as a youngster, I didn't appreciate it until you go through your own fire, amen? When you get your own snake bite, then you recognize, no, this thing isn't easy, but you gotta keep on keeping on. Come on, church, just tell your neighbor, just keep on keeping on. Don't stop now, you've come too far. You gotta just keep on keeping on. It may not make sense to the world. They're saying, what are you talking about? Give up, throw in the towel. But we know that without your cross, there's no crown. Amen, church? Sometimes you got to bear your cross because there's waiting for you a crown. Somebody needs to be encouraged today. Yes, the Lord did allow us to get a little snake bite. And we know it's not just about shaking it off, but it's about a detour. And the detour is confirmation that you're headed in the right direction. So you may not be at Rome right now. Let's just acknowledge that. Rome was the desired destination for Paul. But before he got to Rome, he had to go to Malta. So I don't know where you are along that continuum, but just understand that your Rome is glory. Your Rome is your home. So don't get too comfortable down here, church. We're only pilgrims. I used to have a friend, and he used to, he used to have the, the most severe insults. He, he, I mean, you didn't want to get into a dissing contest with him. And I shall never forget when he, him and a, another friend of mine, they were just going at it. And he said something that was so cruel. Of course, we all laughed because you, you couldn't help yourself. But he said one morning he got up and he saw our friend in his backyard. And uh, he said, yo, what are you doing in my, in my backyard? And he said, my friend had a, a big uh, knapsack on. And uh, he says, what are you doing in my, in my backyard? And he said, my friend, he said, the other guy said, well, I'm just moving. And I thought to myself, we have a backpack on because this is not our home. So there are times when we have to move from one place to another place. God is trying to take us from one level to another level. But along that continuum is going to be a malta. It's going to be a snake bite. So let's just keep on going on because there's coming a time when we're going to hear, well done, you did it. Come home and come and rest. But until then, let's keep on working. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. And Lord, as we prepare to march around Jericho, may the walls of unbelief and the walls of fear and depression, may they come tumbling down. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the detours of life because they, they remind us that we may not have arrived yet, but we are a work in progress. In Jesus' name.